Good afternoon, everyone. We're so glad that you can tune in and be with us on this Saturday, which is actually day nine of our Lenten journey as we move forward. Today, I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm disappointed that I had this topic. I kind of wanted to pass it off to my colleagues, uh, our, our pastoral staff. Caroline did a great job with patience. Uh, we quick, quickly realized that I didn't have patience, so we, we give that to her. And Robert has done a wonderful job, and, but when it comes to this topic, um, it's something I think we all struggle with. Uh, I want to begin by just, just saying how appreciative we are for everybody tuning in. Our, our views are up, our numbers are up, people are interacting with us, and the feedback that we're getting is everybody is enjoying the Lenten journey together. And that's the whole purpose of that. We go through this with each other. It's not something that we actually go through alone, that we go through it as a church connected. And we can do that in person and virtually, and also, but we go through it knowing that we're depending upon God to bless us each and every day. Even as we may give up something for spiritual disciplines to enhance our walk, we all are blessed by the gifts that God shares with each and every one of us. We've had some wonderful topics. We all can see the things that we've discussed so, so far and know that it's truly a blessing. But I think today's is one that we will truly struggle with and continue to struggle with. So let's begin with prayer. God, as we come to this moment to discern another topic, we ask, Lord, that we would think back on all the things that we've studied. Yes, God, we'll need patience for this one. Yes, Lord, we'll need the ability to listen. Yes, God, we will all develop with hope and love in Jesus Christ moving through your word. But now, God, grant us the ability to listen. This we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Let the church say, Amen. Our scripture reading for today is, comes from Psalm 4610. Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. May the Lord enhance the reading of his word to the ears and hearts of the people. So today's topic, dun, 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 is silence. Be honest, you're uncomfortable with it. You're uncomfortable with it. You're like, is, my, is, the, is the mute button on? You're adjusting your volume. Why is he not talking? We tuned into this so that we could hear something, hear a devotion. We struggle with silence. In the church, in life, in our relationship with God, we do a lot of things great in the church. We do some amazing work in missions. Uh, Hunt Memorial, that's a testimony to the great work of mission. And all four churches are connected in that missional opportunity. We do great work in our worship experience. Our worship team here at Reynolds Memorial does a phenomenal job in the way that they go about worship. They put in a lot of time practicing, preparing, planning, praying so that they can offer that wonderful component that we all enjoy each and every Sunday morning. I'm always blessed by the, the, by the John Wesley Choir when I go and I preach there, and I, I feel the, the spiritualness of each and every one of them as they pour their heart and soul into that passion of singing praises unto God. Uh, it's easy for me to preach when they, when they sing. I, I just seems like all I have to do is just get up and say a few words because I'm energized by the, by the choir. There's some people that can pray some beautiful prayers. There's some people that can do some dynamic preaching. There are some wonderful gifted leaders in the church that can put together great devotions and wonderful prayer chains. But the one thing we struggle with is silence, to be still. And I think that's something that God demands of us. 
Because the thing about it, it's a two-way street. When we're silent, we're always worried that something's going to break the silence and it's going to be us. If we're in a group, particularly on a Sunday morning, and there's silence, our stomachs may growl. And heaven forbid, right, that our stomachs would growl and someone would hear it and be like, we're like, ooh, 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 we're trying to cover it up. You know, we, we don't like silence. We, we like noise. And that, that kind of takes the emphasis away from us. Maybe we're not noticed when it's noisy. We live in, in, a, in a busy world, in a busy society, and we're all programmed from the time that we're little kids to speak and interact and be active. And those are good things. Those are blessings of God. But I think in our relationship with God, we must be silent. Yesterday, the devotion was listening, and listening and silence goes hand in hand and really, before you can listen and be attentive to God's word, you must be silent and remember that God speaks to us not in earthquakes, not in fires, not in great calamities and booming voices, but in a still, small voice. And as we discussed yesterday, God gave us two ears and one mouth, and maybe that means we should listen twice as much as we speak. But in order to listen, we must be silent. In the Gospel of Mark, Early on, Jesus begins his ministry, and he does some wonderful miracles. He casts out demons. He heals Peter's mother-in-law. He, he does some remarkable work in that people are bringing all the sick folk. They're found at the door at the house of Peter's mother-in-law at Capernaum. And his popularity grows. And then all of a sudden it says that he goes away to a deserted place, and there he prays. Now what Mark doesn't say but what I feel very confident Jesus did was he took the time to be silently listening to God the Almighty Father in the direction that he needed to be. And there he said, let's go to another town. We struggle with silence because we're uncomfortable with it. We lose control with it. When we're silent, oftentimes we think about our own demons that we're wrestling with. I know for me, <laughs> I am the world's worst to sit in silence because the moment that I sit in silence and my feet go up, my head goes down, I go to sleep. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about taking a nap, although that is something that's very important. Rest is important, but to be in silence is to be focused on one particular thing. And I struggle with that, and I would suggest that you do too. If I'm silent, I jump from sermon prep to meeting organizations to family events to what we're going to have for supper and what's, what's the next thing I need to do. That's not silence. That's busyness even within our mind. When we're silent, and we focus our hearts and our minds and our lives upon God, we can receive something that's very precious that we sometimes overlook and need to be reminded of, that God is with us. God is with us, yes, in the noise and the business of life, but in the silence, God is with us. My mother-in-law was a hard-working, dedicated lady, and she died of a horrible disease of Alzheimer's. And Diane struggled to care for her. She was the primary caregiver. She was the only daughter, and she labored to care for her and support her family and hold down a full-time job for the last three years of her life. And it was a very emotional time. Uh, it was emotional for Diane, it was emotional for all of us as we tried to support her. And in the very latter stages of Alzheimer's, of course, uh, the patient loses all cognitive skills. They don't even recognize who they, their family is, their, their dearest loved ones. They can't even call them by name. And I've often said that you, that person dies more than just a physical death. They die uh, a physical death, a spiritual death, an emotional death. They die of those kinds of deaths. It's very traumatic. And about a week 
before she passed away. She hadn't called Diane by name for over a year. And she actually had called me by name later than, than, she, than she could remember Diane's. And Diane went to her room that, that day, about a week before she passed, and when she saw Diane, she said, there you are. She recognized her, it seemed. It was a great gift for Diane. And then a week later, she passed away. And Diane, well, of course, and all of us were emotionally shook up by that. And Diane said she didn't even know who I was. And I said, I know, but we knew her. And even in the silence of her death, we experienced the presence of God. And that's what we need. We don't always have the answers. We preachers like to think so. Give us a theological question. We love to just hash it out. We love to throw out scriptures and prayers and history. The truth of the matter is we don't have all the answers. We don't have everything figured out. So sometimes all of us need to just sit in silence and embrace the loving presence of God. And we can't do that all the time when we're busy. There is a, something I want to go share with you in the book. Sometimes the greatest act of worship is not singing a song, but to simply be still. If you were ever able to visit the Grand Canyon, it can be a religious experience. You stand over the edge of the canyon, and you're overwhelmed by its size and beauty. It brings you to a place where you recognize just how small you are and just how connected you are to a greater and larger creation. You stand at the edge. You don't sing a song. You don't try to put it in words. You stand there in silence and in awe because you're amazed and there's no way to truly describe it. And the business of our world and the business of our worship, we need to be more silent. I want to be honest with you. You be honest with me. Be honest with yourself. When myself and Caroline, Pastor Caroline, Pastor Robert stand up here on Sunday mornings and we offer a moment of silence. Ask yourself, are you truly uncomfortable in that? And what seems to be briefly 10 or 15 seconds, you may think has lasted a minute. It's hard to sit and be silent. But when we do, we can experience the great power of a big and awesome God. Let us pray. It's tough, Lord. It's tough to listen because we think we can figure it out on our own. It's tough to be patient. It's tough, God, to see all the, the wonders of this world and not try to put it into words. It's tough, God, to rest. Rest is something that we all need. But yes, God, it's even tougher to be silent. So enable us to put off the worldly noise, to set aside the confusion, to be still and know that you are God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you for tuning in staying faithful to this spiritual journey, and we hope to see you Monday for in-person.